Next up, we're going to combine some u substitution in here with our inverse trigonometric forms. First up, we have the indefinite integral of e to the 2x over the square root of 1 minus e to the 4x all times dx. Now, a big thing to look for in this one is situations where you see that something appears to be the square of something else. So the thing that I'd like to take note of here is that if I refer to e to the 4x, this is actually the square of e to the 2x. When you have a base raised to a power raised to a power, you can multiply those two things together. So what I'm going to do is say we're going to let u be equal to e to the 2x power. That way du would be equal to derivative of an exponential is the same exponential, and we multiply by this extra 2 because of the chain rule. Now we do have an e to the 2x and a dx lying around. What we don't have is that extra 2. So I'd like to point out that e to the 2x times dx will be substituted as 1 half of du. So when all is said and done, in the radical in the denominator, as I pointed out just a moment ago, e to the 2x quantity squared would be u squared in this case. So this would be 1 minus u squared. The e to the 2x times dx is going to get substituted as half of du. And since I've already eaten up everything from that numerator, the only thing that would be left would be that 1. So aside from the extra coefficient of 1 half, we have exactly what looks like an arc sine of u. Indefinite integral, so tag on that plus c as well. And then, of course, we should substitute back and call this 1 half of the arc sine of e to the 2x plus c. If you're interested in checking this, of course, you can take a derivative and prove that you're awesome. Uh, for another one involving a substitution, similar thing to what we saw on the previous one, we have the indefinite integral of the sine of t over 1 plus the cosine squared of t. Now, one might be inclined to try using 1 plus the cosine squared of t as your um, u in this case, and of course, you're welcome to do so. I'm going to point out, though, that if you were to take a look at the individual cosine, one of the big things for u substitution is to make sure that not only do you have a good substitution, but you also have the derivative of that substitution around here for your du. Now, derivative of cosine of t would be the negative sine of t, dt, and we have everything present except for that extra negative. Therefore, we will take the sine of t times dt and replace it with a negative du. What this means for us is the numerator will become negative du, the denominator will be 1 plus u squared. Now, aside from the negative sign, we have exactly a case of the arctangent function. So this will be the negative arctangent of u plus a constant. Therefore, we'll call this the negative arctangent of what was u, the cosine of t, and we'll keep that plus c in place as well. So yeah, sometimes these can be a little bit difficult to identify, but do look for things in the denominator that look like it might be a number plus something squared or the square root of something minus something squared. Those are typically things that you would want to try to look for.